welcome to our Thursday Q&A session. So I'm Lauren, um, I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks from me with Lauren, so I will be here to answer your questions. And today we're talking about um, puppies at, at night time and getting them to sleep as well. So I'm gonna, as always, I'll go through the questions, I'll answer anything that people have um, commented and hopefully give you some tips and some things to try as well. So let me start with the first question. So that was, I made the error of letting the pup sleep in my room um, and uh, I've made a few attempts at moving him down and down away. If we use a crate, he whines and cries. If not, he paws and scratches the paintwork of the doors and he's six months old. So that's a really good question. It's a really common thing that people do. So, um, so it's not a bad thing. We'll talk about it a bit later on. It's not a bad thing if you get your puppy sleeping in your room. Um, but we'll come to that. Uh, what I would suggest with this one is, number one, is he sleeping in a crate in your room or is he sleeping freely in your room? If he's sleeping in a crate in your room, then that's going to be slightly easier because he's used to sleeping in the crate, so you can maybe use that a little bit later, um, later on. If he's not used to sleeping in a crate in your room, then could you start to use the crate in your room so he starts to learn that it's a safe place to sleep? So if we think of puppies, and we think of ourselves actually, if we think of any animal, we need to feel safe in order to go to sleep. So if what we want our, the puppy in this case to do is to make sure, so obviously the puppy feels safe in the bedroom. Is that because he's close to you or is that because he's not in a crate? Um, my feeling is that it's probably that he's just not used to being away from you. So it, it is a bit stressful for him moving away and you're doing the right thing trying to move away gradually. So I would look at, so don't move him away and put him in the crate at the same time. I would try and get him used to the crate first of all. Um, if he's not used to the crate and you don't want him sleeping in a crate, then could you, I would look at trying to get him used to being left alone in the house when you're downstairs. So you kind of need a buffer between you um, having him, so have him in your room for the next few nights, but or for the next week or two weeks, however long it takes. But during that time, what you want to do is you really want to start teaching him to not be with you all the time. So if you're in the front room and you go to the kitchen, he can't follow you into the kitchen. And when you're going upstairs, he can't follow you upstairs because I suspect he's probably got a lot of access to you a lot throughout the day. And then all of a sudden you're saying, I'm gonna move you away from me. And even if that's just outside your door, it might just be too much for him. So with this one, what's he sleeping on? And do you need to crate train him? And um, I would also, is he, what access does he have to you throughout the day? So if you think about it, you've got to reduce your access to him throughout the day before you try and reduce your access at night time. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So the best way to do that is probably to, I'd maybe try baby gate actually. If, he's, if he doesn't like a crate, try baby gate because then he can't scratch the paintwork. Um, but yeah, put him um, behind a baby gate and just mean that you can move in and out so he's used to you being able to walk away from him. Um, do that for the next few nights while he's upstairs with you. And then what um, what you want to slowly start doing is maybe bring him downstairs, maybe even settle him and sleep with him downstairs before going back up, but teach him that you're not gonna suddenly just put him downstairs. Also, what I would say with this one is give him lots of cues around bedtime as well. So say, you know, it's bedtime, you're gonna shut the curtains, you're gonna put his bed out, you're gonna maybe get a special toy that he gets out. So it's really clear that it's really nice and safe for him. And maybe do that a few nights with you staying down with him until he goes to sleep and then go back up so he starts to get used to it that way. So I hope that helps. I hope that wasn't too rambling. I know I went through a few things, um, but hopefully that will give you some things to try with him. Um, and you're doing the right thing by moving down slowly, but I think you just need to look at what he's, what he's got in the day and the normal access he's got to you. So next I've got um, tips for the first night. So this is a really good question. So um, hot water bottles, which is really nice and cuddly toys. So we know that when we take our puppies home, they're taken away from everything. They're taken away from their litter. So we want, wanted to mimic that, which is good. Um, and a blanket smell over his mum, which is really nice as well. So good touches. So we plan for him to sleep in a crate overnight in our room or downstairs. So I would, so you've got a few options. Basically, the first night or the first few nights, we've got to think of it from a, almost from a welfare point of view that we're taking this animal away from anything that smells of them, anything that smells like their mother, their litter mates, the owner. Um, you're taking away from the environment that they know they might be coming from a very quiet, rural place to a very loud place. And we're taking a social dog that's probably been used to sleeping with a litter, if not, you know, a whole litter, then at least with another dog, maybe with its mother. And then we're saying, oh, actually, you're gonna to come to this brand new place, and that same day, you're gonna to have to sleep on your own. So 
I always think from that point of view, we want to try and settle the puppies as well as possible because it's really stressful for them. That first night is, is, is a huge stressor. So I would always say try and make sure the puppy is as unstressed as possible. So it might be that you, it might be the puppy's used to a crate, in which case if they've used one in, in the breeders, then you could try a crate. Um, you want to make sure the crate's in a really nice place, so that's just going to be a case of feeding them in there, giving them loads of stuff in there. Don't just shut them in, make sure they've got access in and out and they can move in and out loads as well. So that's going to be what you want to do, but I would put them in, I would make it really, really nice and comfortable what you've done. And you can either, so it depends on what works best for you. You could have them upstairs with you, which is a lot of the time it's the easiest thing because then if they cry, you can just put your hands down to them so they know that there's some comfort there um, and you can kind of settle them through the crate. Or you can sleep downstairs with them. So that, that means that you sleep downstairs and obviously you can move away from them as the nights progress um, or as they start to settle. But I would definitely be there for them because it's such a stressful um stressful time for them um, and then I would start to as you can as the weeks go on and they become more secure and they know you and they trust you and they see you as, as a, a secure figure that they love then you can start to increase the amount of time you move away so and I'm really pleased actually because somebody put a comment and said to get earplugs and, and, and you said it was horrible to see them whine but it will stop after a while so this is a really common thing that people said and I'm actually really pleased someone said that and and I think you kind of said for yourself it is horrible to hear them whine um, I, I would never, so my advice is never to leave them to, to cry it out. And the problem is, there will be some puppies that come home and the people leave them downstairs and they cry for 10 minutes and then they settle and that's it and it was easy. And that, that's the case, every single puppy is different. In my experience, that's quite, that's more rare and they tend to cry for hours. And I just think of it from a logical point of view. If you're listening to them crying for hours, you're not gonna sleep well. So you might as well go down, you know, you might as well sleep with them because you're gonna sleep better that way than having to block out this crying. So from a logical point of view, I always think just sleep with them or have them up with you um, because you're gonna get more sleep that way. Um, from kind of a ethical point of view, I would always sleep with them. And from a scientific point of view, I think what you don't want is you don't want the puppy to get really sensitized to being left. And that just means that every single time they leave, they've got these horrible feelings of stress and anxiety and distress because they've learned from that first night that being left alone is really horrible. So um, some puppies, yeah, they cope with it, but actually some puppies just get worse and worse and worse as the nights go on. And I mean, I've had people that have had to take their puppies back to their breeders because they've tried it this way and the puppy's just not settled and actually they've got even worse and the owners have gone, I can't cope with this, they've got to go back. So um, so I would just always say to sleep down with them is, is the advice from, from that point of view um, or to have them with you. And just to make a comment as well, a lot of people think that they're crying for attention. They're not. They're crying through distress. So, you know, they're not crying because they've learned, oh, I'll cry, and then that gets the owner to come down, and that gets me attention. They're literally crying because they're so distressed. So just think of it in that way. You can't reward distress by going down. The only way to... You can, you can only reward distress... You can only make them more distressed by ignoring them. So the only way to stop distress is by helping them feel better. So if you think of it in that way, I know it's really confusing, you will, all the people listening to this, you are going to hear different people say different things. Uh, so I would just say, if, if you want a professional advice, this is what I'm saying from a professional, as a professional behaviourist and a puppy school tutor, don't leave them to cry out. So, um, but it was really useful to have those comments. So thank you so much, everyone that kind of commented and, and came in there because it was really good to see. And it's a really common thing that people do. So, um, so yeah, so that's great. So I'll move on. Sorry, there was someone at the door, so I'll carry on. Um, so, is it best to leave a nine week old puppy to whine at 2am and take him out to relieve himself in the garden is the next question. So, um, I would say with this one, so nine week old, they're really tiny and they're not able to hold their bladders at that age because they're just babies, really. So, um, good question. I would always wake up to let them out because what you'll find is as time goes on, they should be able to hold their bladders better throughout the day. And once you know they can hold them better throughout the day, then you can start to leave them better at night. So I would always just say, if he's whining at 2 a.m., if they're sleeping well throughout the night and he's waking up at 2 a.m., it's probably that they need to go to the toilet. And, uh, you know, it, say they're going to bed at 10, even 11, that's still quite a long time for them to hold their bladder. So, yeah, I would always wake them and um, let them wake up, take them out to go out. Don't ne You don't necessarily have to go down to wake them up to go to the toilet if they're able to last the night, but lots of puppies can't and they will start to squeak or make noises because they need to go out. So, yes, please do take them out into the garden um, if they cry. So, the next one is, 
Uh, my puppy started off well, go, so this is, a, I think this is a toilet training question, my puppy started off well, weeing on the training pads and going outside, and now I decide, he like shredding the training pads and is messing everywhere. So, um, I will answer this one because it's, it's there. So, with this one, I don't know how old your puppy is. Um, sometimes puppies do regress a little bit with their toilet training, so it could be that it's been really awful weather, so, you know, it's been really wet, it's been really actually freezing cold, and sometimes having a few days of that can make the puppies just not want to go outside, so they're less likely to go outside, and also, you know, we don't punish our dogs, which is good, um, so, you know, they sometimes go, it's more comfortable to go inside, so I would, ne I would never punish a dog ever for going to the toilet in front of me, because if you do that, then what's going to happen is they're not going to want to go outside. What I would do with this one is go back to basics. So start go back every one to two hours, take them outside. If you're shredding the top, if you're shredding the pads and not going on them, just lift them up. There's no point using them unless it, they actually work. So um, I would just lift them up. I would restrict access to all the places in the room that they keep going in. Um, but I think this one sounds like probably needs to just go back to basics, reset it. It might be that you're just that they've started to learn to go in the house. Um, and maybe not had as much access to outside or not wanted to go outside so yeah go back to taking them out as much as you can outside and don't worry about the puppy pads um someone said they've got no issues with sleeping at night that is great um i'm not good with no sleep so good to hear that uh so someone has put a simple but controversial question where should your dogs sleep so that is a really good question um i don't actually see it that controversial because i just think let your dogs sleep where you want them to sleep. I'm not bothered, you know, it, it, it really depends on the dog and the person. So some people were, say that they want their dog to sleep downstairs in the utility room. And if that's the case and their dog's happy and you're happy, then they can sleep there. Some people want their dogs up in the bedroom. Again, if you want them sleeping up there, that's really up to you. It doesn't really matter. The, the things that you want, so a lot of people worry that if the dog sleeps in the bed, that they're gonna start becoming more dominant or they'll become more alpha. But the only thing, I wouldn't worry about that. We don't, dogs, they're not really seeking, you know, they know we're people. They're not seeking to be dominant over us. Um, I can put more information about that if you need it. But I think, um, yeah, they, it's, it's scientifically what that was based on has been disproved. So the person who, just really quickly, the person who said about dogs needing to, wolves in a wolf pack and need to be alpha and they need to be dominant over each other and how it translates dogs actually came out and said I, that's wrong i was wrong um but unfortunately the damage has already been done so if anyone wants any more information i can put that in for you but um so i wouldn't worry about dogs being upset the only danger signs are if a dog sleeps in your bed but they it, it, it exacerbates separation problems so if they literally cannot be left alone so they're following you around they you've got they've got really bad separation anxiety it doesn't matter even if they do you wouldn't suddenly be like you're not sleeping in my bed anymore but that's just one thing to consider is that if you're doing that you need to make sure we do have some separate time and they're able to cope in the house with you if they're sleeping in your bed i would also just make sure they don't ever start guarding your bed or you know that tends to not be puppies anyway that tends to be old dogs and even if they do you'd want to get a vet check to make sure that it's not a discomfort issue anyway um but the, yeah the other issue can be that they start to guard a safe comfortable um space but if that happens there tends to be a lot of other stuff going on anyway it's really you know I, I, that's that's one of the fallouts from it i suppose but it, it, not in puppies so um and the other thing is what you can do is teach some manners around it. So you don't want a dog just always jumping up when you don't want them to. So I tend to try and teach some manners so that they're invited up onto the bed or the sofa. So that's something to consider. But to be honest, like if someone says, oh, my dog sleeps in my bed with me, I'm like, great. You know, that's, that's up to them. As long as there's no other problems from it, then it's not a problem. So, um, yeah. So hopefully that's answered your question. So someone has put... Would love some advice on the first few nights, hoping our puppy to be happy to sleep in the crate in the kitchen, getting lots of mixed advice. So hopefully this has kind of answered a few of your questions, but I would say get them used to the crate as quickly as you can throughout the day. Don't just shut them in there. Basically the first night you're going to be spent, resign yourself to spending time with your puppy. You're going to sit with them. You're going to be waiting until they fall asleep. Don't just put them in when they're in the peak of play mode. Wait for them to start to fall asleep. Um, and, and I would probably, if you're in the kitchen, I would probably stay down with them. Um, potentially if they cry you could go down to them but it's probably just easier if you just sleep next to them in the kitchen um yeah a lot of people a lot of people will say the, the traditional advice is leave them to cry out don't go down to them as soon as you do that they learn to cry 
I've, I've seen so many thousands of puppies, I, I just don't, it just doesn't work like that. So, um, yeah, so I would, again, go through all the advice that you've done. Um, everything's going to be different as well. Your puppy's going to be different. Your house is going to be different. Your needs going to be different. So people were going to give you advice, but but do what do what works for you. But just make sure your puppy's not left to cry in distress. Um, and I think that might be all the questions. So I'm just going to summarise. So we spoke about puppies at night. So all you want to do work out what suits you best. Have a plan in place already. Um, if you're going to crate train, make it a really, really lovely place for them before you even think about shutting them in. If you need to move them down from being upstairs, then do that slowly and build up absences in the house because it might be too sudden to just suddenly move them down. Don't need them to cry it out. If they're crying at night, the first few nights is distress, it's not tension seeking, so it doesn't matter if we go down to them anyway. Um, and try not to leave them to get into that state. Um, and it doesn't where they sleep is, is a matter of personal preference and taking into account, you know, making sure that there's no other problems going on. So I hope this has helped you. Um, I hope this has given you some things to think about and kind of cleared up a few things around the bedtime routine. We'll be back next Thursday. It will likely be another puppy school tutor, so you'll get to see someone, the faces of someone else, um, which would be great. But um, let me know if you've got any more questions. Please do comment. It's so lovely when we get feedback and when we know that it's helped someone. So please comment. Please let us know how you get on. Um, and we love to hear. Thank you.